1905 is known as Einstein's miracle year. It was the year he wrote monumental papers on the photoelectric effect, Brownian motion, and perhaps most importantly, special relativity. With his theory of special relativity, Einstein changed the way in which physics was viewed and led an upheaval of centuries worth of conventional thought on how the universe functioned. Among the changes brought about by special relativity were these ideas that the laws of physics are universal, thus they are consistent in all frames of reference, the speed of light is observed as the same constant by every observer, and time can vary depending on which reference frame an observer is in. Prior to Einstein, nobody worried about what type of time was being measured. Time was just time. In Newtonian physics, time was constant and the same for all observers. Einstein, however, thought differently. He saw that time can speed up and slow down, effectively showing that instead of our universe having just three spatial dimensions, our universe actually consists of four dimensions, three spatial dimensions, x, y, and z, and a time dimension, t. This idea that space and time are tangled up together into a single fabric, rather than being separate entities, leads us to the topic of today's video, space-time. When we plot the motion of an everyday object, such as a car traveling down the road, or a ball being thrown, we construct a Cartesian graph which has axes such as x and y. We would then plot the motion of the object as a function of the dependent variable. For example, as the car drives the number of units in the x direction, it also moves some number of units in the y direction. Likewise, you could plot time as a function of x, and your graph would look as such. This graph shows how the object's motion in the x dimension changes as time changes. In relativity, understanding how an object moves in spacetime is of utmost importance. To visually represent this, we construct what's called a spacetime diagram. In a spacetime diagram, we plot time on the vertical axis and the spatial dimension on the horizontal axis. This allows us to see how an object is moving through spacetime. For these graphs, the units of measurements are in seconds for both time and distance. For distance, this is achieved by measuring in light seconds, the distance that light can travel in one second. So if you were giving directions to a person using a space-time diagram to navigate, you wouldn't tell them to travel 5 miles and make a left. Rather, you would tell them to go 2.684 times 10 to the negative fifth light seconds and then turn left. A point on a space-time diagram is called an event. An event is something in space-time with a designated time and place. Take Tyler, for example. Here, Tyler is standing and is going to clap his hands. Go and clap, Tyler. Let's consider that Tyler, clapping his hands together, is an event. On a space-time diagram, we would give that clap a specific time and position, such as x equals 1 and t equals 1. Taking the same graphical approach, let's look at what happens when we have several events occurring at the same time. If three Tylers stood next to each other at x equals 1, 2, and 3, and all clapped their hands at t equals 1, then our space-time diagram looks something like this. Looking at this graph, we can see that simultaneous events occur along a horizontal line. Likewise, if Tyler stands in one spot and claps his hands three times in one second intervals, our graph shows three events connected by a vertical line. Events which fall on a vertical line occur at the same position, but at different times. Now that we have seen how we can represent simultaneous events, it's time to explore this further and introduce a key component of space-time diagrams, the world line. We saw how Tyler clapping his hands represents a single event in spacetime, but in order to plot Tyler's motion through spacetime, we need to think of each movement as an event. So, if we look at Tyler while he stands still, how could we plot his motion through spacetime? If Tyler stands still, his position along the x-axis does not move, but time is still moving so that we create a vertical line of events. If we consider every moment to be an event, then we have a continuous line of events. 
This is a world line. It is a continuous series of events that traces out an object's motion in space-time. Since Tyler is stationary, his world line is completely vertical. It is important to remember that a vertical world line corresponds to a static object. Now that we have the world line of a static object down, what do we do with a moving object? Remember that an object is always moving through time, so the world line of a dynamic object will also move through space. Take for example Mandy and Tyler. If they both stand still, then their world lines will always be vertical. But when Mandy starts walking towards Tyler, she changes her location along the spatial axis. She moves along the x-axis as well as the t-axis, so her world line begins to tilt. This tilting of the world line is what represents motion on a space-time diagram. If we look at a comparison of Tyler and Mandy's world line, we can see how Tyler has a vertical world line which means he is stationary in space, whereas Mandy's world line is tilted, which indicates that she has motion. If Mandy were to speed up, her world line will become more horizontal, and likewise, it will be more vertical if she slows down. Let's take a moment and remember an important part of special relativity. Einstein said that the speed of light is constant and is the maximum speed possible, so it acts as a cosmic speed limit. How would we then plot a light ray on a space-time diagram? Recall that we measure our units in seconds for both distance and time on these graphs. So if I emit a flash of light, it will travel the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which is the distance it will go in one second every light second. So plotting this after one second, the light ray has traveled a distance of one light second. After two seconds, the light ray has gone two light seconds. If we draw a straight line through these events, we have created the world line of a light ray. If we look at a light ray, we can see that its world line is tilted at a 45 degree angle. Since the speed of light is the cosmic speed limit, the world line of any moving object will be tilted less than 45 degrees from the time axis. If a world line is tilted more than 45 degrees, then it is moving faster than the speed of light. We've seen how an object moves in one dimensional spacetime, but now let's add a second spatial dimension. A good example of this is to look at a running track from a top view. As a runner circles the track, the runner's position along the x-axis changes along with their position along the y-axis, creating an ellipse. Moving over to a space-time diagram, we add in time as our vertical axis, and now we have to account for the object moving through time as well as space. Take a look at Brandon. As he runs in a circle, time advances and his x position changes with his y position. If we look just at his spatial coordinates, then Brandon traces out a circle. But shifting into space-time, we can now see that as he moves spatially, time is also moving. Thus, his world line traces out a helix. If we look at the motion of the Earth as it moves around the Sun, then we would see a similar world line, since it moves in an ellipse as it travels around the Sun. We have just learned the art of evaluating the universe using both space and time. Using space-time diagrams, we can visually recognize an object's progression as it moves or as it stands still. Thanks to Einstein, our eyes have been opened to the phenomena of the universe. Thank you.